One is my son Kadar's love for programming, and two, curious learners like yourself who uh, met us at a maker fair and asked us to solve a problem. So I'm Uma, and this is my son Kay. Hello, everyone. My name is Kadar. How are you doing today? Uh, so if you're wondering what Storybot is all about, it's a board game that takes your favorite fairy tales or bedtime stories and teaches children how to convert it into computer code. And the way it um, works, actually before I tell you more about Storybot, I want to share a little insider story as to why we even did this. So Kater, like a lot of kids that you know today, started out using technology very young. He was really into doing his Wii games and started beating Daddy in every single game out there. And when we were really excited that he was picking up a lot of strategy and getting up with speed, some of the things that bothered us was the fact that his eyes were strained a lot. And while he was playing a lot of these games, the amount of stress he was taking was really getting to me. And so we pretended as the, the Wii game broke and thought that would end all our miseries, but it didn't happen. <laughs> and uh, so he kept pestering us saying, where's my game, bring it back, or I know it's not broken, you're just making it up. And so I had to make up my own story saying, yes dude, it's broken, but you can make it. <laughs> and what we told him was, there is something called Scratch, where you can program your own games to play, so that's how you fix the Wii that you broke. Okay, why do you like Scratch? Because it's a fun way for kids to code. What do you like to code with Scratch? For example, I really love the Transformers, so I made a little story and I'm making the game. Yeah. So what happened was, Kedar started to get really, really good at programming, and um, we thought it would be a fun uh, thing to do, was to take his games to a maker fair and have um, other kids enjoy playing them too, and learn how to code. So we went to the maker fair in DC, actually, uh, early June this year, and um, had a lot of fun seeing young programmers interact and make their own games. But at the end of the Maker Faire, someone very interesting came up to us and asked Kater to solve a problem. Who did you meet, Kay? Mr. Patrick. And what did Mr. Patrick ask you to do? He asked me to find a way for our blind friends to code. And how did you go about doing that? I made a braille board game that was 3D for them. So they could touch and feel. And they'll know what they have or what they don't have. Yeah, so what are some of the problems you had when you were designing your board game? The characters kept falling off. I had to find a way to stick them. I found that glue would stick them forever and I wouldn't be able to reset the game. So I found out it was magnets that would work. And this I tried to put on the board. So you used magnets to make pieces that stick to your board. What challenges did you have on the board itself? Well, I knew that the magnets would stick on some sort of things, but sometimes it won't stick on something. And so I took a bunch of different metals. One was copper, the other was iron, and the other one, the last one, so that was stainless steel. And then I tested copper, the magnets weren't sticking. And then I tested iron, the magnets would stick, but it wasn't easy to lift. And some people would try to lift the board. So, I found out that stainless steel was best because I could stick the magnets and lift it very up easily. And then who helped you make this board game? Who helped you uh, cut the board into pieces and stuff like that? My grandpa. And what else did you do with the board? How did you make sure that your blind friends could feel the scores on the board? Well, this is what happened. I took my, so I took just some pieces that were made of cardboard that was too weak, it was more breakable. And then I had to 
combined, I found out I had to make it stronger. And so what I did was, I took one of my friend's help, his name is Mr. Jeff, and he 3D printed because I don't have a printer yet. It, yeah, so then I just took Mr. Jeff's help, he printed the blocks for me. It was much stronger. So we took Kater's um, prototype, which was actually cardboard pieces of code blocks, and we saw that when we took it to the children to play, they were so excited interacting with those pieces that it would often break. So we took the help of our local uh, bank chapter and uh, have them 3D print our code blocks so that they were more sturdy. Peter, do you want to show how this game works? Of course, I would love to show you all. And who helped you play and test this game? My blind friends. First we tested it with the boys. They liked it, but they just thought that the animated characters were boring. They wanted movie characters like Simba. And so, yeah, we're going to test that out later with the boys. And the girls, they loved it, and they wanted to keep playing with the dolls. Well, what kind of game did you play with the girls? What was this called? Cody Locks and the Three Bears. It's sort of a game where you called Goldilocks, so she's called Cody Locks. Do you want to explain how this game is played? Yes, and this is one of the basic ways for our blind friends to code. Very cool. So this is how we organize the board. If you see, we have the porridge cups here, the beds there, and we also have the three chairs. And we have some dinosaurs here that Cody Locks can tag. So the, the aim of this game is that Cody Locks has to create her own trail to one of these objects, whether it's to the kitchen or to the bedroom or to the living room and then we would take those story pieces and convert it into code pieces. So here if you see we've actually created a path for we've actually created a path where Cody Locks is going to the dinosaur. Hey can you explain the code for this? Yes, I can. So, so you see, our girl, Cody Locks, is up there. So this is what I want to do. See, let's just pretend that she went down there. I want her to touch that dinosaur over there. And so the code for this is I'm going to move up two steps, one, two. Then I'm going to move right three steps. One, two, three. Now I've touched the dinosaur. I stopped my code. Cool. So the reason why um, we chose to do code this way was because our friends could actually feel those pieces even though they couldn't see it. And the tactile aspect of the game made it a lot easier for our blind friends to feel it. So then we started to go into a little more complicated logic, like if-then loops. So Kay, do you want to explain how this works? Yes. No. So, we want Cody Locks to go up the chair. Let's pretend she went all the way down there again. So now, I move up six steps. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, if I'm touching which bed. So we have an if-then condition. Get it? And an if-then condition is where there is a question and the character will perform an act based on the answer. So what is the question? She's touching a chair that's wide. So what do you how do you write code for that? And I want to tell you guys, this is Papa's chair. So this is the code for it. If I'm touching thing, that's my heart, I'm just pretending it's Papa chair, okay? Then I'm going to say something. I'm going to say, see that texture? That's what I want to say. Too wide. 
So here we have a hand symbol that our friends could feel for the code saying touch. And the mouth symbol was what they could feel to write the code say. And if it, it might not be very clear here, but th this text is actually braille. So though it's normal text for us, for our blind friends, they could actually feel the braille behind it. And then we end the loop. And then we stop the program. The reason why we, are at, we aren't writing anything is because our blind friends, they're supposed to feel they like, can't see it and write. Sorry, they can't see it and read. So we don't need to put those like writing things. We don't need to write on it. So we kept actually expanding our logic to do it for mama's chair to do it for the baby's chair and we started to write more complex if then loops for the bed using else statements. So a lot of not only the or the blind community enjoyed it, but also the regular um, Maker Faire community. We'd taken it last week to the DC Maker Faire. We saw that a lot of kids had fun playing this game. So our takeaway for this presentation, or my two cents for my son, was that a lot of people will be playing games, but a few people will make it. So be one of those that make it. And it doesn't matter whether you're six years old or 60 years old, you can always make a difference. And don't feel you're alone because your community is out there to help you and support you do what you want. Thanks. Guys, I want to say I'm only seven and I've done this. So it doesn't matter what age you are, even if you're five, even four. <laughs> reading and yeah can code anyone who knows reading thank you guys so much if you guys want to take questions maybe you guys can um, walk over by the table over there and take the questions over there thank you so much Thanks.